Greeting brethren, I'd like to call to your attention a book for your consideration called In Defense of the Authenticity of 1 John 5, 7. It's a defense of the, um, the authorized version, the King James Bible. There are some modern translations that uh, exclude or take out entirely 1 John 5, 7, which is a support or a proof text for the Trinity. All right? Now, this falls under the uh, category of textual criticism. This book would be a, an excellent source for a, uh, a seminarian, somebody who's going off to seminary and taking a class in textual criticism, or for anybody who simply uh, loves and believes in the King James Bible like I do. I was brought up with the King James Bible. I never really used any other version, and I have been told by Greek scholars it's an excellent, trustworthy translation. Um bit difficult in the old English, but you know what? It's beautiful when you think about it. And um, the King James Bible was actually used, uh, it came out in 1611, but was actually used by a uh, majority of the Puritans, I believe, and also God was, uh, God was uh, pleased to use it and bless it to his church through such men as George Whitfield, who in 1740 started the Great Awakening and under Charles Spurgeon in the 1800s. So, um, the King James Bible has a lot going for it. 400 years of history, proven history. I really don't trust the modern versions, and I've looked through some of them with a brother and um, found that uh, the NIV, for example, and the New American Standard Bible take out a lot of uh, scripture texts. They really butcher the Word of God. And while they may seem easier to understand in some, in some instances, uh, if it's not the Word of God or it only contains the Word of God, then we're in trouble, okay? And in fact, the liberals, they say that the, uh, all scriptures that is inspired by God is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, and correction. Instead of saying all scripture is inspired by God. Or rather, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, as it says in the King James Bible. Anyway, getting back to uh, Mr. Pappas' book here. Let's uh, go back. I want to read something, or I, I will actually show it to you here. Let's just uh, scroll down here to the what the author says here. You can read this. I will... Um... Interesting. This book was actually published on April 2nd, which is my birthday. So, although I haven't read this book, uh, I've looked through it, and it looks very intriguing. I will buy it, and I recommend you do, do so also. So let's just go through this. You'll be able to read this. Stop it. Back it up. I'm just scrolling across the uh, wording here. Maybe I will read this. With the exceptions of a few sprinkled torches here and there, the entire earth was shrouded in darkness. But there was a man, Martin Luther, that stood resisting that darkness. Before the August Emperor, Charles V, and the Roman Church, he boldly stood. When asked to recant, his reply was in his conscience, was his conscience was held captive by the Word of God. Unless he could be proven wrong by Scripture, he could not and would not recant. With his life now hanging in the balances, he, he concluded, Here I stand. I cannot do otherwise, so help me God. Those acquainted with, uh, with history are aware how the light began to shine, dispelling darkness that had long enslaved men. men. Presently, we find ourselves in a similar situation. Darkness has spread over the entire world. Men are holding to an atheistic worldview. They have embraced the amoral. Nothing any longer is right or wrong. The acceptable has become unacceptable, and the unacceptable has become acceptable. There is no longer a voice of authority. Men are left with no place to stand as the sacred scriptures have been brought into question. Is this not apparent when contemporary scholars have amended many passages of the sacred scriptures? 
Other passages have been placed in brackets, bringing them into question. And now they have gone so far as to remove an entire passage from the Bible, 1 John 5, 7. With such irreverence for the scriptures, where are we to take our stand? Are these critics right? No. The author has set forth his case for the authenticity of 1 John 5, 7. He has exposed the fallacious critical methods of textual criticism and their authorities. May the reader consider the evidence as set forth and then make his decision. Okay, I like to go to the table of contents real quick. And you can just take, oh, it just disappeared on me. Let me, let me back it up here. T table of contents. All right, well, it's very sensitive here, I see. Try to scroll back up there again. Give you a shot of that. There it is. And let's go to the back cover. Something interesting back here. Hope you can read that. Anyway, I wanted to bring this to your attention. You can um, find this on Amazon.com. Paperback version is $13.95. The Kindle version is $9.95. By C.H. Pappas, who has his Master's in Theology. Anything else we should know about this book? I can just tell you this, I was brought up with a Schofield Bible, which is King James Bible, uh, King James Version essentially. Never used any other version. I looked through a few of them, but um, I just, you know, I quote all my scriptures in King James. It's no problem. I would say a majority of Christians, even back when I was growing up, uh, were not using the King James Bible at, at, uh, in college. Today, definitely they're not which is very sad because I believe that that's one of the ways in which Satan has corrupted the scriptures. You see, the Bible, since 1611, uh, God has blessed the King James Bible through men such as uh, George Whitfield, and, um, and which uh, brought about the great, uh, God brought about the Great Awakening through George Whitfield in 1740. Charles Spurgeon used the King James Bible. The majority of the Puritans used the King James Bible. So basically, from a historical argument, we've got the King James Bible being blessed by God to his church for 400 years now, okay? 401 years. And why will we tamper with the Bible and try to improve upon it? I really believe that this is an attack by Satan uh, on the Word of God. So that the liberals, they say, we do not have the Word of God. The Bible does not... It is not the Word of God. It's, it only contains the Word of God. Now we have to decide what it is, you see. Whereas if we stick with the King James Bible, as blessed by God, we have the Word of God. We have the Word of God in, in uh, I think, the Geneva Bible too, which is the Bible that uh, John Calvin used. Now, I'm not a textual critic. I haven't studied this subject out in depth. I'm only telling you about this book because uh, I think it's worthy of uh, purchasing. And um, let's see what this is. Just scrolling through some of the text here. I was going through a version of the New International Version and I uh, was going through some verses that were actually deleted from the New International Version, which is found in the King James and also the New American Standard Bible. And when you butcher the Bible like this, claiming that it's more accurate or that these verses were not in the, the original, um, you're tampering with the Word of God. You better have good reason for doing what you're doing. I think that these, um, these, other, vi these other Bible versions uh, are best 
not used. That's my personal opinion. That's my gut instinct. And like I said, from the historical argument, God has brought about many, many conversions through the King James Bible. Can we say that through these other translations? Well, God might have been pleased to bring about conversions, but we have 400 years on the side of the King James Bible. Anyway, I hope you get this book. I'm definitely going to buy it. And um, what more can I say? In defense of the authenticity of 1 John 5, 7 is the title. Let me give you a big shot of the uh, front cover again. There it is. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Post your comments. God bless you.